Remember Castlevania Symphony of the Night, or, I mean, <laughs> I guess we're not really playing it right now, and this is kind of a funny part of the game and something I really like, because you get to play the end of Castlevania Rondo of Blood before you then start the actual game, and that's exactly what we're playing right now. But yes, do you remember that? That is the first Castlevania game to be released on PlayStation 1. PlayStation, yeah, it is actually PlayStation 1. Fucking Xbox One always throws me off because every time I say Xbox One, I then immediately think, oh fuck, I should be saying original Xbox right now and not Xbox One because that's a new thing now. I I'm not a big fan of it, and that <laughs> now apparently also puts me off when it comes to the PlayStation uh, side of things, which I don't know. Shouldn't be happening. I don't know why it did, but it did. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, we're currently playing the end of Castlevania Rondo of Blood just to kind of be introduced to what then uh, the setting for Castlevania Symphony of the Night is going to be because, uh, yeah, it kind of basically is a direct sequel to Rondo of Blood, which is really nice. Rondo of Blood I never played, by the way. Uh, even Castlevania Symphony of the Night is one of the first Castlevania game said I oh I, I paused the game I didn't even know I thought the game crashed for whatever reason which would be really bad for business um, but yeah so Castlevania Symphony of the Night was one of the first Castlevanias that I would play because my brothers actually they never really were into the Castlevania series too much growing up and back then I was too small I didn't have any rights um, in that whole relationship, so I wasn't the one buying the games, my brothers of course were the ones who bought the games and I would be the one to then play the games that they bought. And uh, yeah, that's how I grew up without Castlevania, which is upsetting, I guess, but the cool thing is now I get to go back and experience, uh, experience them with uh, a more developed brain, I guess you could say. I mean, it's, it's hard to, 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 to say sometimes that it's actually more developed than what uh, the brain of an inf infant would be, but yes. I I, <laughs> I don't know where I just took this whole conversation, to be completely honest. But uh, yeah, so I, I only last year started playing Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I, I actually started it on my Vita, because I beat Guacamelee and I enjoyed it so much and I wanted to play a game that would have a similar kind of setup. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I never, I didn't beat it, so don't get me wrong. I actually never played through Castlevania Symphony of the Night. I just really, really enjoyed my time with it, and thought I'd show it off because I recently um, did a series on Guacamole here on my channel, and you guys seem to like it. So I thought I'd show you what um, other games of a similar genre might look like. And the funny thing is, even that this is basically the the founding father of that whole franchise. Metroidvania is what people call it most of the time. Maybe not the best term, because uh, Metroidvania, that Vania part, of course, comes from Castlevania, but not every Castlevania. Basically, only this one and then a few DS ones afterwards because the early ones were all level by level which is not what Metroidvania describes so I don't know maybe it's just me that gets a little picky when it comes to genre descriptions but yeah um, this very much the first Metroidvania like I don't know I guess Metroid is but I don't know. it's super weird hopefully you know where I'm coming from there but yeah um, we are currently fighting Dracula, in case you didn't know, and that's what you do for the majority of uh, this this beginning introduction here. I mean, oh fuck off! Oh really? Come on, just let me hide underneath a kneecap, and then hopefully burn you horribly before you burn me horribly. I'm probably gonna die. Oh fuck off! I would love to not die here because what you actually usually would do in this oh fuck I died well yeah this is actually what you would do you probably lose all your health then some chick comes along I have no idea what her name actually is because as I said never played Rondo of Blood that game would probably explain that at some point 
But yeah, she comes, powers you up, and then you kill the Dracula dude. But I was so, so close to beating him even without that upgrade that I'm now a little sad. I guess it doesn't matter too much. And this also then ends the beginning sequence to Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Really a creative kind of thing. And this is something that games never really, at least as far as I know, never really did. Like, are there any other games that do it similarly to Castlevania Symphony of the Night? Um, so, give you the end of the game that came before to play and then only start the new one? Because I really like this. This is really intriguing. It gets you right into the action. And there's also like a nice nostalgia thing for everybody that's played the, the, the prequel. So, um, of course, they then introduce a little bit of story, what happened in between Rondo of Blood and Symphony of the Night, who, who you are, because you play as Alucard, he's like a son of Dracula. I'm not really too much into Castlevania lore, so I can't really tell you what it's all about, but th that's all you need to know for now, especially for this video. Only, so, uh, yeah, very soon. We'll start the actual game because what we just played is very very similar to earlier Castlevanias in terms of gameplay now it kind of changes a little bit it introduces RPG elements introduces an open world and in general just introduces a Fantastic game this game is so Really 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 good. I really enjoy it and hopefully you guys will now also kind of be intrigued by it, pick it up, because I think this is something you should play. It's, it's a really, really good game. And it, it's kind of fascinating that even back then they so absolutely knew what they were doing and how to make something amazing. And that oftentimes just blows my mind, looking back at games and just seeing similarities to, for example, Dark Souls, even in this game, I think they even stated that they uh, were in, like strongly influenced by Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Um, with the whole setting and open world and, and just combat being a definitely difficult part of the game. But yeah, here we are. We're now playing as Alucard, that uh, said son of Dracula or whatever. And now as you can see, it's a little bit faster. We're really strong. We kill fucking werewolf super monster hound in just one mere hit. And it's kind of crazy. And uh, this actually, the way they now set up this whole introductory part, the second introductory part or whatever, um, it is then something that has become, oh god, a trope uh, for this f genre. I always keep fucking trying to say franchise, but that's totally not the case. The genre, Metroidvania, they like to do what what is basically going on right now. You start out being super incredibly powerful, you can kill almost everything, you're absolutely buff, it's crazy, have all the good weapons and blah blah blah, and then very soon something unfortunate will happen. Um, Alright, so let's let's do that and then go through here, and yeah, I think it's, it's about to happen. Maybe only this corridor, and then we're basically right where I was uh, talking about. So let's kill all these guys. All of them. Luckily, the the ground zombie dudes are not showing up because I really hate those. They always put me off. I hate them. Hate them. Hate them. Hate them. <laughs> but yeah, here we are now, because he's gonna take all our powers from us. That we then have to start out as a weak Alucard and gain all our powers again, and and struggle a lot in the process. And yeah, th as I said, this is something that then kind of, kind of became a trope for the genre. A lot of games now do this. I will not. Let's see, can I think of one you off the top of my head? I can't. I guess Super Metroid kind of does the same, or did the same even. So I don't know. My timeline is all weird because I didn't grow up playing this, but yeah. We're now super weak sauce. All we can do is punch... And that is not really too helpful. Soon we'll be able to pick up weapons though, so that is kind of nice. And uh, what I want to do for this episode right here, for this second entry in the Remember series, 
uh, looking back at Castlevania Symphony of the Night. <laughs> um, I, I basically want to beat the first boss. That is kind of what I set out to do, so let's focus on that and I don't know. I have no idea how long it's going to take me, but that's something I'd really like to accomplish in this episode. So for now, since we picked up a sword, let's uh, very much equip that. I need to get used to the fact that the triangle button is now actually the back button. Which is very weird, but yeah. And there's a new sword for us. I don't think it's better than the one that I currently have, though. And I'm gonna save, because... Very difficult. As I think I have said before, but let's emphasize that again. Pretty darn difficult game, oftentimes. Once you know what you're doing, it's alright, but I haven't played this in a good while. So, I might, I might very well die. Uh sometime soon in like the f few minutes or something but yeah let's pick up all the stuff of course if you've played a Castlevania game before you know the hearts um, are not even health they don't up your health at all it's just um, yeah basically an indicator for your ammo how many times you can still use your uh, secondary weapon that I currently do not have a single one off. Alright, so let's let's be careful with this guy. Destroy all his bones. Open that thing up. Pick up whatever it contains. I don't really remember. Ooh, that's actually is that that's armor, I think. Yeah, there we go. Awesome. I'm not even gonna try and pronounce that stupid word there, because I have no shitting idea, so instead I'm just gonna carry on. Kill red skeleton of uh rejuvenation. They they get back up. I don't know. That's that's why I said that in case you were wondering why I was once again being stupid in German there. But yeah. Um, what is actually over here? Oh, that's another safe point. We don't need that. I don't need to waste your time doing shit like that. Instead, we're gonna carry on here, fight a bigger, our first like bigger enemy, and still pretty easy because I know a good strategy. Although he almost hit me. Um. So yeah, and very soon here we'll actually get to a boss, I think. It's just a matter of like a few minutes. Uh, but don't quote me on that. As I said, haven't really played this in quite a while. So yeah, the shield is something you can equip for your other hand. Uh, I, I never really liked them too much though. I don't know, they confused me whenever I used them so... I just never really bothered about the shields, so I'm not going to use them now. Instead, I'm just going to try to be as offensive as possible. Uh, in terms of my, my fighting here, of course not in terms of my commentary, because then things would look a little different. <laughs> I would probably be a lot louder and a lot more racist. But anyway, I want to hit... Oh god. Do not get hit by Tears of Doom, because I think they actually poison you, and that is something you might want to avoid. I mean, whatever tickles your fancy right, but uh, it's something I'd rather avoid. Alright, and there we go, that's him gone. Very good. But yeah, just making progress in this game is absolutely a lot of fun. Always picking up new abilities, picking up new items, better swords, better armor, new capes or whatever. It, it, it really gets crazy and it's a lot of fun because it's really rewarding with almost everything that it does and uh, boss fights are really memorable oftentimes hard as nails and it's just really a good time I hope I hope this is something that y you guys also enjoy and check out because I really do think that this is something you should play now Having saved, I think we're very, 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 very close to the actual boss fight. So everybody, get your fingers ready, ready to cross them throughout the entirety of this boss fight, this upcoming one. And yes, I do want to take the axe and drop the, the, the bladey throwy magic dagger. And yeah, here we are. This is actually the first boss and I'm scared out of my mind because I could very much die very soon here. I ho really hope that's not going to be the case. Um, just really want to want to use all 
my weird throwy axes that I might run out of very, very soon here. Yeah, that was actually the last one. And then uh, focus on attacking these guys. It's really, it's okay, as long as they do this kind of stuff. Like, take the other one, drop him, blah blah blah, I don't really mind that too much. Once they split up and he starts spitting fiery... Uh... The fiery... Agony? There we go, that's, that's probably a good way of describing it. It gets really, really bad, I hate it. But I think I, I might have... Oh no, I killed the one. Not the bigger problem, though, because he's actually a big, big pain in the ass. It might very easily kill me. I mean, fucking, that's almost gonna do it now. I can... Let me think about this real quick. I think I can heal myself with this. Only have to be careful about it, because... I have dropped it once before, and then, like, it just disappeared. Into whatever uh, the equivalent to heaven is. Oh, I can't duck under that. I didn't even know about that. Is he dead? <gasps> oh, God. I might very well be the greatest Castlevania Symphony of the Night player to ever roam the Earth. I'm not really roaming too much right now. I'm just sitting here in my recording chair. <laughs> kind of lonely. Uh, but I hope everybody enjoyed this episode. I'm going to end it very, very soon here. Maybe get to another save point, which there should be one soon, somewhere, hello, <laughs> but yeah, as I said, I don't know, if you enjoy fucking uh, the Metroidvanias yourself, this is one you probably have played before, if not, I would highly, highly suggest that you do. Um, I am having a lot of fun with this game still. I've never beat it. I plan on doing that. Um, it's just that I really am pretty busy with with other games right now. And then also s fucking Dark Souls 2 is coming out very soon. And that is just... That is madness when you think about this. Dark Souls 2 is actually coming out soon. I don't know if you guys are even excited about this. Or if this is even still topical when you are watching this video. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end it right here. Thank you so, so much for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back with more Remember episodes, checking out more games that I personally enjoyed or didn't enjoy as a kid or even a uh, young adult, whatever you want to call me. Uh, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.